G'day everyone, welcome back to the finals edition of Just The Tips, or at least week one of the finals edition. So to cover off how we went in the final round of 2024, um, I got every tip right until the final one, um, which I was kind of, you know, I wasn't super confident about a lot of these results, but it ended up going pretty much how I suggested it would. Uh, the dogs beating GWS, I was uncertain about. St Kilda over Carlton, again, I mean, that game went down to the last 12 seconds or whatever it was. Um, so I'm very close to getting that wrong, but thankfully it played out that way. And I really thought Fremantle would win to claim a spot in the top eight to end the season. But of course, Port Adelaide were too good and very impressive in that particular game as well. So eight out of nine tips, pretty happy with that. Let's cover off how everyone else did. So the best tip of this week in the members tipping competition was Go Pies 2024. As an aside, I would like to shout out the newest member of the True Footy channel, Sean Taylor, who joined recently this week and has become a member of the True Footy family. I mean, you're all part of the True Footy family. Thank you so much for your support, Sean. Uh, if you are not part of the members tipping competition, leave a comment below and I'll try and find a way to get you in. As for the general tipping competition, which has like 1,200 or 1,300 people, the winner this week was Xavier Cisternino with a perfect round of nine and a margin of four points. That's outstanding tipping. Well done, Xavier. The overall leader in the members tipping competition is Real Swift, although it is tight at the top. He's got 140 correct tips this year with a margin of 739. And the general tipping leader is the Wet Toast Eagles once again. Um, I think he's been top three or four out of the last four weeks. 144 correct tips and a margin of 666. That is devilishly good tipping from you, Wet Toast Eagles and the Fantasy League winner. So I'll say winner this week because the fantasy competition has wrapped up and unsurprisingly, Tully Griffiths with 2175 average points per week has taken out the fantasy league competition. Tully, if you're watching this, congratulations, outstanding going. If you could get in touch with the channel, that would be great. If you could write an email to truefootypodcast at gmail.com, just get in touch, that'd be great. I'd love to be able to have a chat with you about this. I do remember the last time I did this, I put out my email address and I got like 13 messages saying I was the one who won the competition. So perhaps send a screenshot or something like that. I realize I'm opening myself up to chaos here, but I can't see your contact details on the fantasy app. But anyway, the rest of the tipping competitions will continue over finals. There's still a good chance we have new leaders. It's very, very tight at the top. All right, without further ado, let's talk about week one. So I have put out my finals predictions already, um, which you can find on the channel where I predict every single game in the final series. But nonetheless, we're going to persevere with this show and um, you know talk a little bit more deeply about each game. So kicks off with Port Adelaide versus Geelong at Adelaide Oval. This should be a good contest. I'll tell you what, watching Port Adelaide win against Fremantle, um, particularly when I was a bit invested in the game, you know, obviously wanting Fremantle to choke. <laughs> I'm half joking. It's been a sad season as a West Coast fan. That, that brought me very little joy, but some joy. But in, in all seriousness, I thought Port Adelaide managed that game really well. I thought their pressure was outstanding. And I, I really do think they are a serious contender this year and perhaps a team that might be maturing at the right time. So this will be a tough game for Geelong. But in terms of their foreign lines, you know, Port Adelaide's won all five of their last games, in fact. Uh, of course, most recently, a good win in Perth against Fremantle, where Fremantle arguably had more to play for than they did. Geelong, as well, have had a good end of the year. They've won four of their last five. A final round tune-up against the Eagles, who, you know, barely let out a whimper in that game. But around that, their form's been good. They've become quite a good contested ball side towards the end of the year. Their clearance game has really improved. Um, and they did have one loss to St Kilda towards the end of the year, but... Again, probably not enough to really mitigate some optimism around the Cats. That doesn't mean this game will be easy. When you consider as well, Port have actually won two out of the last three clashes against the Cats, and one of those, was, or two of those games were actually at GMHBA. One was a 12-point loss, and the other was a uh, one-goal win or something like that. So the head-to-head -head form there is slightly skewed in Port Adelaide's favor. As well, you consider they have played in finals. This is going back a little while now. I think it was 2020 and 2021. If I'm not mistaken on those years, Port Adelaide beat Geelong both times in those finals. A little bit has changed since then, but still something to consider. I think for me, I, I'm probably a little bit more compelled by uh, Port Adelaide here, especially considering the home factor. Again, if this game's at the MCG, it, it might go differently, but I think I'm leaning towards the home side here. It's interesting watching the evolution of Port Adelaide's style. They've become quite an uncontested brand team now. They're actually below average for contested ball, but top four for uncontested ball. So their ability to use the ball, control the footy, they're actually second in the league for marks in the last five weeks. But both of these sides are actually, have become, at least in the last five weeks in Geelong's case, good stoppage teams. It's first in the league from scores from stoppage, that's Port Adelaide, to Geelong's third. Again, in the last five weeks, that is a little inflated, possibly by Geelong's big win over West Coast. But either way, I think this is going to be 
a potentially really good battle, but I think my confidence is leaning with the home side. So I'm gonna say Port Adelaide win this by three goals. Western Bulldogs versus Hawthorne is the tastiest matchup. I, I think I think I wish these two sides weren't playing. I wish there was an opportunity for both of these sides to be playing semi-finals next week. But nonetheless, they've drawn each other. It's gonna be the MCG, the only final in Melbourne this week. And if I'm not mistaken, it's entirely possible that this will be one of only three finals at the MCG this year. Because if Geelong lose to Port Adelaide, they'll host a semi-final. But if they beat Port Adelaide, they'll host a prelim. But other than that, there's no other opportunities until the grand final. Interesting stuff. So the change of venue is re relevant here. These two sides um, have not met at the MCG since 2019. Before that, it was 2016. Those are the only two occasions these two teams have played each other at this ground since 2011, which is incredible. Quite a few Tassie games and of course Marvel Stadium. I will note as well, the only two times these sides have met at the G, I think the Bulldogs have won both of them. But again, we're so far removed from that. One of them was when they uh, ended Hawthorne's like three-peat defense, if you want to call it that. They knocked them out of finals, went on to win the premiership. But it's a very, very different time now. So both of these sides ended the year in pretty good form. The Dogs won four of their last five. One outlier lost to the Crows in Adelaide, where they got pretty well beaten. I think on that day they were particularly poor in front of goal, but nonetheless, disappointing loss. Other than that, they've been pretty red hot. In the final round, they beat GWS. Not too sure what to make of that. Don't know how that game would have gone if, say, GWS had, you know, didn't have laid outs and had a bit more to play for. Nonetheless, I did tip the Bulldogs anyway, and they won. Hawthorne, on the other hand, finishing the season... Well, I wouldn't say they're coasting because they absolutely cracked some teams. That's a phrase that I've just made up. They've cracked them. I had a fairly easy run towards the end of the year. Huge win over the Blues, huge win over Adelaide, huge win over Richmond, huge win over North Melbourne. Nonetheless, they're putting huge scores on the board. They did have one loss to the Giants, but they did also get like five goals up in that game. So either way, either way, I think we're very impressed with Hawthorne. I'm also impressed with the Western Bulldogs, and this is going to be an outstanding game. Hawthorne's form at the MCG is maybe the key variable here for me that's making me lean towards the Hawks. They've played five games there since round 12 and won them all. Admittedly, some of them were against not so good teams, but there's a big win over Collingwood. And I think it's it's been pretty well documented. Their ability to navigate the, the wider ground will probably play in their favor in this game. The Dogs have only played at the G twice this year, which is interesting. Um, that was a big loss to Melbourne in round one and then a big win over Richmond halfway through the year. We've got two strong clearance sides here. Hawks are fantastic. They're very well-rounded. Contested ball, uncontested ball. Um, Hawthorne are number one from scores from the back half in the last five rounds, bearing in mind some of those were big wins. And in the last five rounds, these are the two top sides for scores from forward half. So I really don't want to see either of these teams eliminated. I think I'm going to go with the Hawks of the MCG factor. Now, they are a young side. They could get shown up by a team that has a lot of champions and experienced champions and premiership players or players that have played in the grand final. Obviously, you know, the the Bulldog side has re-imaged a lot since their premiership, but, you know, Liberatore, Trelaw, Bontempelli, these guys have played in finals and Hawthorne are one of the youngest sides in the competition. I think they're like the third or fourth youngest in terms of selected teams this year. So that is Hawthorne's vulnerability, the inability to step up when it matters. And we know the Bulldogs, when they're on, they do show up in a big way in finals. So I am unsure, but I think I'm going to go down the path of tipping Hawthorne here. So I'll say Hawthorne win this by three goals. Then we've got Sydney and GWS. This was my predicted grand final at the start of the year. And even though I changed that predicted grand final in my finals prediction, you bet I'm going to be hoping this is the grand final so I can look back at my preseason prediction and go, wow, Nostradamus. Um, again, tricky one to tip. Tricky one to tip for a variety of reasons. Now, if you look at the head-to-head -head form, Sydney has actually won all three of the last three clashes against the Giants and beat them twice this year. This is also at the SCG, so a Sydney home game. On the other hand, they've met three times in finals. This will be the fourth, which is crazy, actually, when you consider other interstate rivalries. You know, the Power and the Crows have played in one final against each other. It's never happened in Western Australia. Never happened in Queensland. Feels like it won't happen in Queensland for a little while. I suppose it's possible. But either way, four times is quite strange. And GWS has won all three of those. I think the most recent was 2021. Uh, I think that was, was that the one that was in Tassie? Was that where Toby Green walked through the umpire? There might have been one in 2018. And uh, I think 2016 might have been the other one. Anyway, a little bit removed from that. In terms of current form, we know Sydney had that horrific run of form that they thankfully, from, from their perspective anyway, bucked that trend towards the end. So after their huge loss to Port Adelaide, they, I think they had three wins, 
Uh, a good win over the Crows at the end. They beat the Dons, they beat the Pies. None of these were massively convincing results, but increasingly we saw a return to form for some of their best players like Heaney and Warner and uh, golden has been in good form for a little while now. As for the Giants, they had a seven game winning streak. And then like I talked about the Bulldogs, I don't know how much to mark against the Giants for losing to the Dogs in the, in the last game. Ballarat, the Bulldogs handled those conditions really well. You know, guys like Brent Daniels and somebody else that's escaping me miss a couple of key laid outs. Brent Daniels has been enormous this year and a little bit less to play for. So um, I'm going to assume that the good version of GWS comes out in this game and they could absolutely win this. They're, they're a good finals team, really strong culture there. Their playing style has really come on. They do peak late in seasons. This is a danger game for Sydney. I'm not at all convinced, but I am going to tip the Swans here because I think their best form, which could come out again after the pre-finals buy, you know, some teams just click and, and just turn into a different team when, you know, there's finals to be won. And I think Sydney, I guess I have a gut feel that Sydney will come out and be the better version of themselves and win this game. Not at all convinced. This might be the, the least of the three so far that I'm convinced about, but I'm going to tip the Swans to win this one. Finally, we've got the Brisbane Lions versus Carlton. Carlton, of course, sneaking into finals despite losing their last game and, in fact, lost four of their last five. Uh, nonetheless, the big variable in this is the return of some key players. So I don't know exactly where that sits, and I probably should have a look at you know the injury list and all the selected teams, rather, by the time I actually lock in this prediction, but we can probably expect at least Mackay and Kerno. I think Carlton's spirit in the last fortnight after their injuries showed that at least from an energy point of view and an attitude point of view, they're on the right track. And I think St Kilda is actually a pretty good team at the moment. And we all saw what they did to West Coast when they had every reason to lose that game. They absolutely schooled them. Coming up against the Lions at the Gabbo is, is the unfortunate fixture here. It, I'm sure they would have preferred to play the Dogs or Hawthorne at the G, I mean, even that's not very tempting, is it? But nonetheless, the Gabba against the finals hardened team in the Brisbane Lions will be tricky. Brisbane had been in good form for a long period of time. They faltered late in the season. They had that loss to the Pies and they lost to the Giants. They won three out of the last five. They will still be a formidable opponent and our finals experience, like I said, made it all the way to a grand final last year. At home, I think this will be a tough prospect for them. The head-to-head is interesting. I mean, the Blues went ages without winning at the Gabba. They lost there in the prelim last year, put up a good fight, and then beat them in opening round. Bearing in mind, Brisbane had a sloppy start to the season, and then Carlton had a sloppy mid to late part of the season. I'm expecting a good version of Carlton to come out here. Again, I think finals sometimes brings that out in teams, and I think Carlton's finals record, I mean, I'm really going off the data of last year, where they came in having not played many finals as a group, if any, like many of that list wouldn't have played in a final before, and they won two close battles, and they pushed Brisbane last year, kicking the first five goals of that prelim. I, um, I have no real doubt that they're able to lift the occasion, and from a talent point of view, they're pretty sweet, obviously. I just obviously remains to be seen exactly how many players are. Are you going to be 100% for this game and be selected? I genuinely give Carlton a good chance here if we get the good version of Carlton, but I do think the Lions at the Gabba in a final, I think this is going to be a little bit too much of an ask. I wouldn't be surprised if Carlton win this game. It would just shake up the finals race nicely but I think I'm unwilling to tip them at the moment. So I've got to go with the home side, the proven side, who has admittedly faltered late. They should win this game. I'll say the Lions win this by about 20 points. Anyway, guys, that is my take on the first week of the finals. And uh, let me know in the comments how you see this playing out. It will be great. I don't think I'll get a chance to live stream anything this week, but I'll make a commitment from week two. I'll be live streaming every week up into the grand final. And I will surely live stream the grand final. I've got nothing else to do. So let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.